Okay. So, very good evening to all of you. I am uh, Fani Krishna, faculty of uh, Ace Engineering Academy for microprocessors. So, today in this uh, one hour live session, no, I will be discussing about some concepts on the microprocessors. But within one hour, no, I cannot cover entire uh, all the topics of 8085. So, I will be trying to explain about some concepts of microprocessors through while using some uh, questions, through questions and solutions I will be trying to explain, right. Not only concepts, I will be trying to explain about uh, preparation strategy for all those students who are appearing for Genco exam. This one hour live session is for those students who are appearing for Genco exam, right, the two subject is on microprocessors. Let us look at the syllabus first. This is the syllabus, anywhere uh, either uh, let it be Genco exam or any, any other state level PSC exam, syllabus is this place, right, normally in general, general uh, syllabus, 8 bit microprocessor basics, architecture, programming and interface. Seems to be one line uh, syllabus, is it not one, one and a half line syllabus, but so many topics, no? so many concepts are to be learned uh, regarding the microprocessor place. In some other uh, state level PSC exams, uh, right, you will be finding uh, additional uh, topics like 8086 microprocessor, microcontrollers, depending upon the requirement, no? depending upon the state level PSU, you will be finding uh, those uh, microprocessors and microcontrollers. So, based on your requirement, you need to study about those processors. But for Genco students, you have only 8085 microprocessor, right, there is no need to learn about microcontrollers. Some features of the 8086 microprocessor you try to learn, that is up to you. So, first let me start with the preparation strategy, right. These are all, the, this is for what uh, preparation strategy for Genco students please, for uh, Genco students, not for gate exam, not for e AES exam or ES exam, Genco or any state level PSC exam, any state level PSC exam, right, whoever is appearing for uh, uh, those exams, no, regarding microprocessors, this is the preparation strategy. Let me take change that. So, these are all the topics, no, subtopics you need to learn about microprocessor. One is the architecture, another one is the registers, another one is the instruction sets, pin details and interface. These are all the topics you need to learn. But please understand the way you prepared for your exam, where you learned about microprocessors, let us look at your preparation strategy, already you carried out no preparation, you learned about microprocessors. Whatever you learned about microprocessors, no, in engineering is for answering theory based questions, conventional questions and a few objective questions also, but objective questioning answering is, uh, was not the main objective there. You prepared for theory based questions, you prepared for lab exam, is it not? But this, that is not the case here, you are not appearing for lab exam, you are not preparing for a theory based exam, your point of view is going to be objective based questions. Your point of view should be answering objective based questions, objective questions. For example, you take no architecture and uh, pin details or I'll start with the architecture. Let us look at uh, your preparation strategy, how you prepared. You land the architecture of 8085, let it be 8085 or 8086 according to your uh, what you call syllabus, no, university syllabus based on the university, let it be 8085 or 8086. <laughs> You learned about architecture, learned means what? You studied about architecture, you call it as block diagram or you call it as organization, whatever it is, you studied, but uh, please understand you practiced how to draw the architecture diagram because uh, at that time you, you need to answer questions like uh, draw the architecture of a so and so processor, 8085 processor or 8086 processor with a neat sketch, discuss the block diagram of 8085 microprocessor with a neat sketch. So, you need to practice architecture there, two, three times you used to practice, how are the building blocks of the microprocessor, what are the internal buses of the microprocessor, all that you practice two, three times before going to exam. Even not only architecture, if you observe the pin details, no, that also you practiced a 40 pin IC 8085 microprocessor or 8086 microprocessor 40 pin IC. You learned what, you learned how to draw the pin diagram, that was also one of the main points main objectives while learning the microprocessor, pin number 1 to pin number 40, which pin number corresponds to which function, that also you practiced. 
because at that time in uh, your engineering no third year or final year wherever you land microprocessor or microcontroller uh, you 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 are supposed to answer for questions like uh, uh, draw the pin diagram of uh, so and so 8085 or 8086 microprocessor or 8051 microcontroller so you practiced how to draw the pin diagram pin number uh, for example 8051 pin number 18 and 19 corresponds to xtl1 and xtl2 so at that time you are supposed to draw the pin diagram with uh, pin numbers with respect to the pin details that was one of the main objectives but that is not the case here please understand either for genco exam or any psu exam who will ask you to draw the architecture of 8085 with a neat sketch who will ask you to draw the pin diagram of 8085 microprocessor so that is not the point of view you learn the architecture you study the architecture but no one will ask you to draw the architecture so you please concentrate on the building blocks what are the building blocks right what are the building blocks and what is the flow and what is that flow flow of information operational flow of operation within that microprocessor how the opcode is flowing where is alu where is decoder is decoder is in control unit or in alu what type of uh, registers are available is memory is there inside of that architecture outside of the architecture that all those points you need to concentrate please understand there is no need to mug up no the architecture diagram even in pin details also when you are learning about pin details uh, right uh, pin out diagram is not important you only you have to concentrate on the functions functions of those pins how many address pins are there how many data pins are there if so and so number of address pins are there what is the corresponding addressing capacity what is read and write control pins how many interrupt pins are there dma pins are there serial pins are there are you getting my point please so don't think that you need to learn about the pin diagram and architecture the way you learned the preparation strategy is going to change the way of preparation is going to be modified a little bit all that the way you learned there is not supposed to be uh, practiced here and what about uh, other thing registers that is fine all that the registers and register functions no symbols of those registers accumulator b register and corresponding functions symbols of those registers what is program counter what is a uh, stack pointer one one single line statements will be there that you need to learn suppose for example program counter is there that is going to hold the address of the next instruction stack pointer is there that is going to hold the address of the top location of the stack you need to remember hundreds of registers are not going to be there na in a microprocessor only handful of few registers will be there easily you can remember the functions of all those registers please understand and also about instruction set that instruction set of any microprocessor you need to learn a strictly speaking if you want to play the role of a programmer as a programmer if you want to develop a program so then you need to learn instruction set let's look at that way of preparation in our engineering no? while learning about the microprocessor at that time you are supposed to encounter questions theory questions in the end exam final semester exam and also for microprocessors unlike most of the subjects you attend lab sessions also so in lab session no what you are supposed to do you are supposed to write a program suppose for example they will give you a question write a program develop a program and execute it for adding uh, some finding out some of the squares of the first 10 natural numbers you need to remember the logic for that program you need to design a flow chart for that program and you need to remember all those instructions required all the instructions in the instruction set you need to remember there will not be any support so with respect to those instructions you try to your develop your logic and any errors are there you need to remove all those errors that is the concept of debugging then you have to execute then you will show the results so uh, during that lab sessions no lab uh, exam sessions uh, for attending those lab sessions you need to remember all those instructions that is not the case here who will ask you to write a program do you think in a uh, genco exam now for one mark do you think they will ask you to write a program to find the factorial some of a number to find sum of first 10 natural numbers no one will ask you to write a program please they will give you a program small program not consisting 10 15 instructions some a set of a few 6 to 5 to 6 instructions will be there little bit plus or minus so when you see the program you must be able to identify the operation of those instructions that is enough 
you learn about push instruction right so you just remember the operation of the push instruction you need not remember the instruction please right when you see the program when you look at push b in a section you must be able to identify the operation you must be able to execute the operation you must when you see move a comma b you should be able to uh, prepare from the operation that is enough you need not develop the logic you need not develop all those logics please earlier uh, you used to remember all those logics na 20 programs 25 programs if any new program is asked you know in end exam there during that examination for 15 marks uh, you are supposed to develop the program that is not the case here a program will be given right you need to identify the output of that program they will ask you what is the contents of accumulator you will see or they will ask you what is the effect of flags they will give xraa later we will see one question xraa in a section is executed what is the effect on a particular flag they will ask you. addition operation is performed what is the effect on the carry flag after addition what is the contents of accumulator what is the effect on the carry flag so please understand don't think when you are learning about genco microprocessors for genco kind of exam or ies kind of exam you need to do the way you did in engineering that is completely different this is completely different just to go through it organization you go through it pin details you go through it some concepts you need to learn registers you go through it instructions you learn for one time one time another time two three times you give a review that is enough and also here let me complete this on instructions no you learn about the required operations of all those instructions please try to learn about operations with respect to the instructions and about interfacing interfacing means what one entire unit you might have studied one unit on memory interfacing and one unit on io interfacing you learned a to d converter interfacing d to a converter interfacing you practiced keyboard interfacing for answering a subjective question no 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 who will ask you to draw a lcd display interfacing here in genco exam who will ask you to draw a 8kb ram interfacing to 8085 micro they will not ask you. but on that interfacing diagram they can frame a question they will give you size of the memory this is memory let's assume they will give you size of this memory starting address of the memory they will ask you about the end address of the memory something like that no i cannot give all the models right so some some interfacing concepts uh, you need to learn sorry is that some interfacing concepts you need to learn right corresponding uh, required concepts uh, you need to learn according to requirements required interfacing concepts not all the interfacing a to d converter interfacing d to a converter interfacing all that is not required here okay only required concepts you need to learn so this is the idea please this is how you are supposed to prepare so whenever i see you no know, students when they think about uh, microprocess they think that uh, we need to do the way we did in engineering no 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 that is completely different this is completely different you are going to encounter object to kind of questions right 8085 is important some features about 8086 microprocessor you try to learn and microcontrollers also definitely you might have learned already in engineering just to go through the features will be useful for some other exam so what i will try to do in this uh, today's session no just uh, he prepared few questions right based on the concepts no we'll try to i will try to explain right some concepts of 8085 for microprocessor through these questions let's start first question In a microcomputer, CPU has the following. Please read. In a microcomputer, microcomp CPU has the following. Option A: ALU memory control units, control unit registers memory, control unit ALU registers, ALU I/O processor memory. microcomputer is not microprocessor microcomputer is an application designed based on microprocessor what is the purpose of a processor you think about it what a microprocessor will do you know what a rectifier will do amplifier will do inverter will do a rectifier will rectify ac to dc an amplifier amplifies it will enhance the signal strength of the input so rectifier rectifies amplifier amplifies what a processor will do processor processes ante kada a processor will process but what it will process it will process your idea as an engineer your idea 
but not that idea when it is there in your mind. You need to give your idea to the microprocessor in a format, in a language understandable to it. That is what programming. Whatever idea you develop, right? That idea for addition, subtraction, something, pushing, bopping, calling, some idea will be there. Now, that idea, you try to develop a program. Obviously, that program contains bugs, errors. You remove all those errors and you store that program in a memory. You don't store the program in a microprocessor. A general purpose microprocessor doesn't contain memory. So, you need to store your program in a Memory. So, what a general purpose microprocessor will contain? A general purpose microprocessor will contain control units. A general purpose microprocessor contains arithmetic logic units and it also contains registers. There is no memory inside a microprocessor. If microprocessor is also there inside a, I mean, if memory is there also, also there inside a microprocessor, we no more call it as a microprocessor, we call it as a microcontroller. Only three building blocks, three main building blocks will be there in a microprocessor, right? That you call it as CPU or that you call it as microprocessor, whatever it is. You will store the program in the external memory. Which type of memory? A permanent memory. Your idea will be stored in this memory in the form of machine language. MLP means machine language program. And also one more memory you will connect here. Briefly, I'm explaining to answer this question. That is RAM, which is meant for storing data. And also, according to requirement, you are going to connect the I.O. devices. All these, you know, program memory, data memory, and I.O. devices, all are interfaced to the microprocessor through the system bus. So my point is, memories are outside the microprocessor. There is no memory inside the microprocessor. So whichever option that has got memory is wrong. ALU is there, control unit is there. That is fine. Memory is not there. And ALU is there, uh, memory. Here you see control unit registers memory. That is also wrong. No, memory is not inside a microprocessor. Control unit ALU register. That is the answer. ALU I.O. processor memory. Memory is not there. I.O. processor also going to be outside. Right? In a higher end applications, no, you will find I.O. processor. That is going to be a coprocessor. That will be outside the microprocessor. So what is the solution? Solution is C. Option is C. And please understand, when you connect memories to the microprocessor, you need to use memory interfacing chips. When you connect I.O. devices to the microprocessor, you need to use peripheral interfacing chips. Directly you cannot interface with this. The answer is C. This kind of one more questions you will get. The register which keeps track of the sequence of instruction execution. Please understand, inside 8085 microprocessor, so many registers are there. Accumulator, B register, C register, D register, so many registers are there. Some registers are general purpose registers, which are meant to hold data. Some registers are special purpose registers. One special purpose register is Program counter, shortly we call it as a PC. That is not the address or reference of program counter, but we write on as PC program counter. Program counter always holds the address of the next instruction. You land in C language. There is a concept known as a pointer. A pointer holds what? Address. Program counter is a pointer. Stack point is a pointer. Data point is a pointer. Any pointer register holds address. So whenever you apply a reset signal to 8085 microprocessor, this 16-bit program counter is initialized with all zeros, 16 zeros. I cannot show 16 zeros here, 16 bits of zeros. So we represent in terms of hexadecimal. That is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 hexa. What is that 0, 0, 0 hexa? That is address, that is not data. So, this program counter is pointing to address 0, 0, 0, 0. What is that address? That is the address of ROM location. And what that ROM location is supposed to contain? It is supposed to contain whatever be the first instruction of your program. So many instructions will be there later. That instruction will be fetched by the microprocessor. Like you open a textbook, na? think. Consider ROM as a textbook. 
How you will open a textbook? Are you going to open from the last page or middle page or first page? First page. Microprocessor also will do the same. It has to read your idea, as I told you. Na? As an engineer, you will store your idea in a permanent memory, that is read-only memory, in a format, in a language, that is acceptable, understandable, suitable to the microprocessor. That is what machine language. So what is the work of the microprocessor? Fetch that intersection, read that intersection, understand what that intersection says, perform the operation, what else it will do? That is what processing. Process is read that intersection outside in the memory, understand what the intersection says by decoding and do it. So once it reads that first intersection and executes, it will be incremented by one, it becomes 0, 0, 0, 1 hex. So where it is pointing to? It is pointing to next location. Assuming in this example all are 1 byte intersections, next location will contain the second intersection. Second instruction will be fetched, decoded and executed. Again, program counter is incremented by one. So program counter keeps track of the sequence of the instruction execution. This is sequential processing. Instruction after instruction, the processor will fetch, understand the instruction by decoding and perform the operation. So what is the answer? Answer is D. ALU of 8085 consists of. So please understand, ALU stands for arithmetic logic unit. In every microprocessor or microcontroller, ALU will be there. But uh, you know, the speciality of ALU of 8085 is, uh, the ALU of 8085 is accumulator based ALU. Accumulator based ALU means what? Uh, if you want to add two numbers, for example, one number should be there in accumulator. 35 and 84 you want to add, for example, 35 is there in accumulator. What about 84? Maybe in B register, C register, D register, E register, H register, L register, or maybe in external memory location. Pointed by HL pair will access it. You can add A and B, you can add A and C, you can add A and D, you can add A and E like that. You cannot add B and C. Because the ALU of 8085 is accumulator based ALU. So please understand I am drawing the ALU of 8085. This is the ALU of 8085. Two inputs will be what kind of ALU? 8 bit ALU. That is the data handling capacity of 8085. Hinted in the name of the processor 8 bit microprocessor. What it tells you? Data handling capacity is 8 bit. Processing capacity is 8-bit. Who is going to handle the data? ALU will handle the data. It will add the data. It will subtract one data from another data. That is what handling. So this ALU has got two inputs place. These are the two inputs. First input is fixed as a accumulator. Please understand. Whatever be the number, one number involved in the operation will be taken into the accumulator. What about second input? What did I say? I said that uh, you can add A and B or A and uh, C, A and D, A and E, A and H, A and L, A and M, any one of them. Or A and, with any other data. So whichever number which, that you want to add or subtract uh, or perform arithmetic logical operation with accumulator, anding, oring, XORing, comparing, whatever it is, that will be temporarily taken into this uh, second register, which is there at the second input of the TLU. This register is known as a temporary register, which is a program invisible register. Are you sorry, it is visible now? It is visible, accepted. It is visible, but that is not accessible. You see, this pen is visible to you now. Can you access this pen? Even if you ask, I don't give. This is my pen. You cannot access this pen. I can access this pen, right? So a programmer, whoever is writing programs, can access accumulator, B, C, D, E, H, L, those registers, but cannot access temporary register. You know that. Some more registers will be there that are also not accessible. So first number here, for example, 35. Second number here, for example, 84. Both the numbers, if a control signal is given to this ALU, who is going to generate control signal to the ALU? 
control unit will generate control signal by based on the instruction. The control unit will fetch the instruction from memory, will decode that instruction, understand what to do and it has to do it now. So control, if the instruction is addition, control unit cannot do addition, it understands that addition is to be performed. So it will generate a control signal to the ALU, for example addition, so then the ALU will take this 35, will take this 84, will perform the addition. If the control unit has produced a addition control signal. If the control unit has produced a subtraction, it will do 35 minus 84. Whatever be the result produced by the ALU in 8085 is stored most of the times back into accumulator. Result most of the times, I am not saying always, most of the times result is stored back into accumulator and the status of the result is stored into something known as a flag register. I am not explaining about those registers uh, and flags here. That is not the purpose of uh, question. This is the ALU of 8085, excluding that control units. Don't take this control units. Here if I keep it, no, otherwise you will think that uh, control unit. Control unit is not a part of uh, ALU, please. Question is on ALU now, so let it be on ALU. So this is your ALU of 8085. Arithmetic and logic circuits are there inside. Flag register is there, accumulator is there, temporary registers are there. Actually, four elements are there. Where is it given? Uh, accumulator, temporary register, arithmetic law. Flag register is not given. Accumulator, arithmetic law circuit, and flag register. Temporary register is not given. Accumulator and arithmetic logic circuits. Remaining two are not given. Accumulator, arithmetic and logic circuits, temporary register, and flag register is the answer. Option D is the answer. Hope you are following. What are be the time given now? See, all the topics, all the concepts of 8085 cannot explain. No? So, some concepts, no, I will try to explain through these questions. Which one of the following is not a vector interrupt? Look at that, not a vector interrupt. Let's not discuss about vector interrupts here. That is not the point. I will just mention total 13 interrupts are there. Out of them, right, one and only one non-vector interrupt is there. Just I will list out. Total 13 interrupts are there in 8085. Out of them, 12 interrupts are vector interrupts. VIs, vector interrupts. What do you mean by vector interrupt? Vector interrupt is such an interrupt for which vector address is fixed by the manufacturer and known to the microprocessor. Such that whenever such interrupt occurs and accepted by the microprocessor, microprocessor will go to that address. What will be there at that address? ISR will be there. It will execute that ISR and after executing ISR, it will return back to the main program. So 12 vector interrupts are there. Any interrupt in 8085 in RST form is a vector interrupt, you know. Any interrupt of 8085 in RST, restart form, you can see here RST 7.5, vectored, RST 3, vectored. You may say a trap. Trap has alternate name. Trap is also known as RST 4.5. So I'm just writing here, RST 4.5, RST 7.5, RST 6.5, RST 5.5, okay? And then what? RST0, software interrupts, RST1, I cannot write all, to RST7, these are all vector interrupts. Uh, RST4.5 is also known as a trap. All these 12 interrupts, 8 software interrupts are there and 4 hardware interrupts are there. Combinedly, these are all vector interrupts. For each vector interrupt, there is a vector address fixed by the manufacturer. There is only one non-vectored interrupt, namely INTR in 8085. What is that? INTR. What that INTR stands for? Interrupt request. INTR stands for interrupt request. In 8086 also you can see non-vectored interrupt is there, that is INTR. To service such non-vectored interrupt, microprocessor where doesn't know the vector address. All these vector interrupts 
fixed vector address will be there for each vector interrupt. For non-vector interrupt, there is no fixed vector address. So whenever a non-vector interrupt request is received via INTR input pin, if accepted by 8085, it will generate a request acknowledgement, acknowledgement for the request signal, interrupt acknowledgement signal, then some special hardware like 8259, which receives that interrupt acknowledgement, uh, supplies the vector address. That is the concept, please. So what is the answer here? B, INTR is not a vector interrupt. The vector address corresponding to the software interrupt RST7. So you see, vector address for any RST interrupt, RST X interrupts. Just now I listed out 12 RST X interrupts na, can be calculated, can be calculated as. That x, number x given, x means what? Here you see in the previous, uh, here x is 4.5, 7.5, 6.5, 5.5, 0, yes, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. RST x or RST n, whatever be the way you mention, right, can be calculated as x multiplied with 8 converted into 16 bit hex number. Whatever this number, no, this number RST7, 7 is X here, N otherwise RSTN. In general, you can also say uh, RSTN. What is that? So it can be represented. So what is the vector address of RST7 and what you have to do? Please multiply 7 with 8, 8 into 7. 8 into 7 is 56 decimal. But you cannot answer 56 decimal. 56 is not there. Uh, they should give 56. Some people will do the such mistake. 56 is decimal value which should be converted into hexadecimal. So please convert 56 into hexadecimal. 16 plus 16 plus 16. 3 sixteenths. Plus 8. That is 38 hexa. Should be a 16 bit na 0, 0, 38 hex. 56 decimal converted into hexadecimal. 16 plus 16 plus 16, 16 plus 16 is 32 plus 16 is 48. Plus, so it is 38 hex. 0, 0, 38 hex. So you can easily remember 0, 0, 0, 8, 1, 0, 1, 8. There will be a sequence. You can remember. One minute. The duration of one T state in 8084 microprocessor that uses a crystal of 5 megahertz. Please understand, 8085 microprocessor has an inbuilt crystal oscillator. Internally, in the architecture, there is a crystal oscillator. That crystal oscillator produces a clock which will be given to the all internal circuits of 8085 that fulfills the clock requirement. Again, in 8051 microcontroller, you will find such inbuilt crystal oscillator. In 8086, there is no inbuilt crystal oscillator. Externally, you have to connect. Crystal oscillator frequency, the water crystal you connected, no, across crystal connection pins. Here, let me show. This is the crystal oscillator inside. That will produce a clock. Falling edge to next falling edge is treated as a one clock cycle. So whatever be the frequency of the clock is F clock. But you have to fulfill clock required, this crystal oscillator requirements. There are two input pins in 8085 microprocessor which are stamped as X1 and X2 crystal connection pins. So what is your responsibility now? 
along with the powering of the processor. You know, VCC input will be there, ground input will be there. You have to connect that VCC input to plus 5 volts, ground to 0 volts. It is your responsibility to put that crystal oscillator also into working condition. So that can be done by placing a crystal across the crystal connection pins. Whatever be the frequency of this crystal is F crystal, I am writing. This is not equal to that. Because of the internal circuitry, this acts like a divide by two circuits. So clock frequency is always crystal frequency by two. In 8085 microprocessor, clock frequency is always crystal frequency by two. Clock frequency is crystal frequency by 2. So normally 6.14 megahertz crystal is said to be placed. 6.14 megahertz by 2, you will get 3.07 megahertz. That is a standard clock frequency at which 8085 is going to operate. So what some people do know, you see what is the duration of uh, one, one clock cycle and uh, that T clock uh, is equal to 1 by 3.07 megahertz. Anyway, that is not the question. What is given here? Given that 5 megahertz is the crystal frequency. What is crystal frequency? 5 megahertz. So what some people do, frequency is given, they are asking about time. They take the inverse of 1 by 5 megahertz. 1 by 5 megahertz and a 0.2 microseconds they will answer. Wrong. The crystal will divide the frequency by 2. So what is the clock frequency? Crystal frequency by 2 in 8085. I am not talking about all the processors please. In 8085, that is 2.5 megahertz. <laughs> What is an one clock cycle time period which is known as a T state 1 by 2.5 megahertz? How much is 1 by 2.5 megahertz? 1 by 2.5 under 0.4 microseconds. 0.4 microseconds. 0.4 microseconds is the answer. Again in 8051 microcontroller, you will find inbuilt crystal oscillator, please. 8086, there is no crystal oscillator. Externally, you need to connect an oscillator. Yeah, the number of hardware interrupts, any previous question? Yeah. The number of hardware interrupts which require an external signal to interrupt uh, present in 8085 microprocessor, just now I mentioned in uh, Interrupts, as you can see here, I just now mentioned, here 12 vector interrupts are there, out of which 4.5, 7.5, 6.5, 5.5, and also this INTR, these are hardware interrupts. Again, I don't want to write. Here I classified according to vector and non-vector, but now I am saying, I don't write here, 4.5, 7.5, 6.5, 5.5, and this INTR, 4 plus 1, Five hardware interrupts are there. Hardware interrupts are in the form of interrupt input pins. A signal received via that interrupt input pin will be treated as an interrupt. It will be recognized if and only if that interrupt is in enabled condition, otherwise not. So, how many hardware interrupts are there? RST. 7.5, 6.5, 5.5, 4.5, and INTR. Total, five hardware interrupts are there. Eight software interrupts are there. Five plus eight, total, 13 interrupts are there in 8085 microprocessor. In a microprocessor, with 16 address and 12 data lines, the maximum number of opcodes is, this is a hypothetical microprocessor, please. 
8085 microprocessor has 16 address lines and 8 data lines. Suppose here, uh, here uh, I, I have here, you see I am microprocessor, assume. I have two buses here. This is address bus, assume. This is a data bus and also control bus will be there. First, uh, I will send address. Why I will send address first? Uh, to select the slave. Thousands of slaves are connected in the form of uh, memory bytes and uh, I.O. devices. I cannot handle all the slaves at a time now, only one slave at a time. So what I need to do is, if I want to perform any either read operation or write operation, I need to send address of that slave first. First I will send address. Then I will generate a read control signal, telling that slave to give me the data or opcode. Then when that slave gives me the information, which may be data or opcode, I cannot receive that information via address bus. Address bus is meant for sending only address not for uh, receiving anything. Address bus is unidirectional. I cannot, uh, what you call, receive anything via control bus. Control bus, I will generate control signals or I will receive some control signals like interrupts. So what is the bus via which I am going to receive any information or send information like data? That is what data bus. Via address bus, I will send address. Via control bus, I will generate control signal or I will receive control signals. Via data bus, I am going to receive data. I am going to send data. I am going to receive the opcode from memory. So, what this uh, question says, uh, in this question it is given, there are 16 address lines and 12 data lines are there. So, uh, 16 address lines are there, which are always going to be outgoing. 16 address lines are there, right? And 12 data lines are there, right? So, so people think uh, data lines are meant for only data. No, 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 no. Data lines are meant for sending data, receiving data, and also for receiving the opcode of the instruction. Otherwise, via which bus the microprocessor will receive opcode? Via data bus only. So, day, via data bus in this given microprocessor, in this given uh, microprocessor of the, in the question, uh, via data bus, the microprocessor is going to receive the opcode. Very fine, from memory, it will receive in the read operation. So when 12 data lines are there, how many bits of opcode it can receive? It can receive 12 bit opcode. So if 12 bit are there in the opcode, how many maximum number of opcodes, one after another, no, suppose it can receive maximum number of opcodes as given in the question is 2 power 12. Combinations, 2 power 12 combinations it can access. Not 2 power 16, 2 power 16 is the addressing capacity. Anyway, 2 power 12 is the answer please. Hope you are following. I may be a little bit fast eh, because uh, within uh, one hour I am uh, supposed to, I wanted to do several other questions. Let's see. In a general purpose microprocessor based design, stack is located in, please understand, stack is a part of uh, data memory. I told you in the very beginning, in the first uh, question itself, two memories are going to be interfaced to the microprocessor. Two memories, I am the microprocessor, I am interfaced with two memories. One contains program, another contains, people say data, but I will say nothing. One is ROM, what it contains? It contains your idea, designer, engineer's idea in the form of machine language, that is program memory. What is this memory? Data memory. So program memory contains program. What data memory contains? And people say normally data, but I say data memory doesn't contain anything, please. It is volatile. You cannot store data as an engineer. If you store data, when the power is turned off, that will be erased. There is no fun in storing any information in a volatile memory. This is a non-volatile, permanent memory, ROM. ROM kawachu, PROM kawachu, either ROM or PROM or uh, EP-ROM or E-square PROM, electrical erasable programmable read-only memory. This is like a textbook for the microprocessor. This is like a RAM is like a notebook for the microprocessor. So when you as an engineer 
want the microprocessor to write the data, give an instruction in your program, then microprocessor will write data into data memory. Stack is meant for pushing data, popping data, pushing some addresses also. Whatever uh, temporarily you want to store, result or whatever you say, program counter content sometimes is pushed into stack. Program counter content uh, is uh, taken back. BC pair you can push, DE pair you can push. Write, read, write, read. Pushing, uh, you, uh, one point. Push and pop operations are performed with a stack. What do you mean by push? Uh, writing. What do you mean by pop? Taking out. What is this memory? Read only memory. You cannot push into read only memory. You cannot make the microprocessor to write into read only memory. Online writing is not possible. Offline, you can put the ROM IC, ROM chip in a uh, memory burner and you can uh, download anything, whatever you want. Uh, you cannot push. So, always remember, stack is a part of data memory. Stack is a part of RAM. Read write memory or RAM. Three varieties of ROM. Three varieties of uh, ROMs are given here, right? Not ROM, not EP ROM. Stack is a part of uh, RAM, please. Stack is a part of read write memory. The pins available for serial communication in 8085 are SOD and SID, serial input data and serial output data. Just I am mentioning. That, that's what I said. When you study the pin diagram, you study. You need not identify what is the pin number of SOD, what is the pin number of SID. That's how you land in engineering. Not here. That preparation point of view, different. Preparation strategy, different there. Preparation strategy, different here. RXD, TXD are what? Those are the pins of 8051 microcontroller, which has got one full duplex serial port with the form of RXD and TXD. Write bar, read bar are the control signals of 8085. SIM and RIM are the intersections of 8085, right? For interrupt masking. So the pins are SOD and SID. 8085 MUP based system uses 4K by 8 RAM. Whose starting address is AA00 exa? What is the address of the last byte? You see? What they are asking? There is a 4 kilobytes of memory interface to 8085 microprocessor. 4096 bytes. First byte to last byte. So many bytes are there. ROM or RAM, obviously given as RAM here. The starting address of this RAM is AA00 hexa. This is what I said, question on interfacing. No one will ask you to draw the interfacing diagram. AA00 hexa is the starting address, first byte number. What is the end address of the last byte, they are asking. See, this is how they frame a question. In engineering, no, you need this knowledge along with this you need to learn and practice how to draw interfacing diagram of 4KV with microprocessor. That is not required here. So how to solve this question? This is last byte address, please. This is first byte address. Always find out the byte difference. BD, BD stands for byte difference. What is the formula for BD? BD is last byte address, end address, minus first byte address, that is starting address. If you can find out BD with help of this given size 4KB, you can use this formula to calculate the end address, because starting address is given. Starting address is AA00 exa. Based on the size, you can calculate byte difference. I will show you. Then you take this starting address to the other side, left side. Starting address plus byte difference will give you end address. So how to find out this uh, uh, byte difference? 4 KB is what? Right as 2 power 4 is 2 power 2 by kilo is 2 power 10 bytes. That is how many? 2 power 12 bytes. That is the size of the memory, 4 KB is 2 power 12 bytes, 8 KB is 2 power 13 bytes, 16 KB is 2 power 14 bytes. Means what is this 12? 
that 12 is the number of address lines of this 4KB RAM. So once I identify 4KB is 2 power 12, statement is, if a memory IC has n address lines, the size of the memory can be specified as 2 power n bytes. That is how we represent. If only one address line is there, 2 power 1 bytes. 2 bytes will be there. That is hypothetical situation, just I am suggesting. So 4KB RAM, this 4KB RAM has how many address lines? 12 address lines. So there is a trick please. Once you know that there are 12 address lines, the trick is byte difference can be calculated. Trick, this is a trick as 12 ones. 13 address lines are there, byte difference is 13 ones. 14 address lines are there, byte difference is 14 ones. So write that, 12 one, that is a trick, that is not like exact like kind of formula, like BD is equal to EA minus SA, directly I am giving that uh, trick, you call it as a shortcut now. Right, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But we don't mention now, nah, in the 1, 1, 1, how will mention that? So group uh, 4, 4 bits in, uh, to form hexadecimal digits from LSB side, 4 bits, next 4 bits, next 4 bits. So what is this? F, 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 hexa, that is the byte difference of 4K. See? That is the byte difference of 4K. Therefore, we got the starting address. No, sorry, we got the byte difference. Starting address is given. Na? What is starting address? A, A, 0, 0, hexa, that is the starting address. What is the byte difference? With respect to the size of the memory, I calculated the byte difference. F, 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 hexa. Every time, whenever it is 4KB, it is F, F, F. You add these two, you are going to get what? You will get the end address. That is the formula says. So, if you know hexadecimal addition, you do it. Don't know, please write in a binary. 1010, 1010, 0000, 0000, 0000, 1111, 1111, 1111. Convert that, write it in binary. What is there? And please add. 0 plus F, I am doing directly. F exa, 0 plus F, F exa, A plus F is, F plus 1 is 10, plus 9 is 19, A plus 1 is B, B9, F, F hexa is the end address of last byte address of this 4KB memory is the answer for a given question. So several other questions also I prepared, right? So in some other session we will try to go through them. So you try to follow the, uh, uh, what you call, uh, the strategy I gave to you. Don't try to learn the way you land in engineering. That's the point, my point. Okay, don't think that uh, again you need to go through all those, uh, uh, what you call, uh, lab sessions, programming. No, 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 no. That concept is different. The way of preparation concept for microprocessor while uh, uh, targeting an objective-based question paper is different. You'll not get so many questions, but whatever you learn, will be useful for different, different PSU kind of exams. Try to learn 8085, try to solve many questions. Not gate questions, please. Not gate questions. Don't go through previous gate papers. Right? PSU questions, any, any other state level PSU question, Genco, Transco kind of questions. Rarely they will ask uh, functions of the pins with respect to pin numbers. Only one time I saw such question. Otherwise not. Right? And the ESC paper question, previous IES questions you try. Basic level, pins, architecture, registers, instructions, not machine cycles, not all that. Go through the features of 8086 microprocessor for once. Google it otherwise. If you, if you have textbooks, no, don't 8086 microprocessor, how to learn. Don't think that again you need to go through Douglas Vihal, all that. Just go through the features of 8086. One uh, few features of 8051 microcontroller. That is enough. Right? So all the best to all of you. Some other time we'll meet. Thank you.
requirement required for the exam. My my tips for the future aspirants who are preparing for GATE exam will be that you should have a very clear plan and a strategy, like how you have to approach the exam, and also believe in yourself and do hard work. Because if you have a very good plan and clear strategy, and if you will work hard, you will definitely achieve your goal. Thank you. My name is Gaurav Kumar. I have secured All India Rank 1 in GATE 22 in Electrical Engineering. I was enrolled in ACE Academy Offline Coaching. The ACE Academy really helped me develop a strong basic required for GATE exam. I was also enrolled in ACE Academy Online Test Series. The questions in ACE Academy Online Test Series were very good and helped me develop a strong temperament required for the exam. My, my tips for the future aspirants who are preparing for GATE exam will be that you should have a very clear plan and strategy like how you have to approach the exam and also believe in yourself and do hard work because if you have a very good plan and clear strategy and if you will work hard you will definitely achieve your goal thank you my name is Gaurav Kumar I have secured all India rank 1 in GATE 22 in Electrical Engineering. I was enrolled in ACE Academy Offline Coaching. The ACE Academy really helped me develop a strong basic required for GATE exam. I was also enrolled in ACE Academy Online Test Series. The questions in ACE Academy Online Test Series were very good and helped me develop a strong temperament required for the exam. My, my tips for the future aspirants who are preparing for GATE exam will be that you should have a very clear plan and strategy like how you have to approach the exam and also believe in yourself and do hard work because if you have a very good plan and clear strategy and if you will work hard you will definitely achieve your goal thank you my name is Gaurav Kumar I have secured all India rank 1 in gate 22 in electrical engineering I was enrolled in ACE Academy offline coaching the ACE Academy really helped me develop a strong basic required for GATE exam. I was also enrolled in ACE Academy Online Test Series. The questions in ACE Academy Online Test Series were very good and helped me develop a strong temperament required for the exam. My, my tips for the future aspirants who are preparing for GATE exam will be that you should have a very clear plan and strategy like how you have to approach the exam 